Hey, doing, gang? We're going to talk about sensation and reality in this uh, section of the lecture. And uh, I want you to think about what exactly is real. Is what we see real? Or uh, is what we um, think real? You know, we have our sensations. Uh, we have our, our five senses um, with sight, tongue, smell, hearing, and, um, and touch. Uh, along with, but have you ever had an experience? Is there the sixth sense? You know, I see dead people. And, um, you know, have you guys ever seen something that you really aren't sure was really what you saw? So your sensations picked it up. Sometimes our, our minds will play tricks on us. And uh, sometimes, um, you know, you have to be aware of that too. So let's take a look at a couple of things uh, before as we go through. Let's talk about perception. Perception is, a crea is creating meaningful patterns from raw sensory information. <clears throat> the way I like to describe perception it's basically uh, looking through your own set of uh, eyeglasses and those eyeglasses if you take a look at the frames it's you know frames of reference which we'll cover in a little bit but um, you see the world through those glasses so you've ever heard the the uh, the saying I see you see the world through rose colored glasses well basically what that means is that you're seeing the world through glasses that are rosy so everything that in your life is real rosy and nice and, and good but you can also see your world through abused glasses. Those are glasses from past experience that are scratched up, smear marks from people, uh, experiences that you've gone through. <clears throat> Those would be considered looking through the world through abused glasses. So if you're in a relationship before and then that person was not a good uh, fit for you and was you know, mean or abusive, even your parents, then you're going to see most likely the next person that you're with through those glasses. That's why a lot of women who will be a, a, in a, an abusive relationship in the beginning with somebody else and then get into a nice one where the guy treats, him, uh, treats her well, that she is expecting something bad to happen. That means that you're looking through those abused glasses. If you're a victim and you see yourself as a victim, guess what? You're looking at the world through abused or victim glasses. The neat thing about perception, though, is that <clears throat> you can change your perception just like you're changing your, your eyesight or your glasses. Uh, for those of you who have, have glasses, if you've gone to, uh, to get your prescription changed, what ends up happening? You know, your, your foot, your kind of, when you get the new glasses on, your, uh, your depth perception is off. So you're, <clears throat> you're not sure where you're stepping. And sometimes your head will hurt. And the reason why your head is hurting is the information that's coming through your eyes is correct. It's just the information in the occipital lobe isn't quite getting used to that and that the correct info coming in. So you want to keep in mind that, that your perception can be changed if you change the way that you look at things. Um, Dr. Wayne Dyer uh, talked about uh, change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. So it's all a matter of perception. Again, if you go through life uh, seeing things that is abusive or against you, you know, change it around and take a look at it as an opportunity, something that you can learn from. All right, so uh, so that's perception. Now, I want you to go take a look at these and try to count the number of black dots. See if you can do that. Okay, so what ends up happening here is that in reality, there are no black dots. It's all the shading that's around uh, the, the, the dots. are all white dots. But your eyes pick up on it and uh, make it look like there's black dots. If you stare right in the middle, then you most likely will not see any of the black dots. So again, that's an illusion that your eyes are uh, playing on you in your mind. Okay. Let's talk about the data reduction system. These are any system that selects, analyzes, or condenses information. And if you take a look at, at what we have now on our bodies, uh, we basically have <clears throat> our diff different data reduction systems, which are your uh, sight. Okay, these are the processes. Your sight is a process. Your hearing is a process. Your smell, your taste, and your, your skin sensation. Those are all data reduction systems. So what happens is that these are systems that use electromagnetic spectrum, all these different information coming in, and they process that information into biological um, uh, brain, um, uh, brain info. 
So what they're basically doing is, is getting gathering all the different data from the senses that are coming in and they're transducing it, which is a device that converts one kind of energy into another, transducing that information into brain waves. So if you, again, if you take a look at Geordi from um, Star Trek Next Generation, he's the one who's blind and has the visor. And that visor itself is a transducer. It's a device that actually transfers the light and all the other um, light waves into brain waves so he can see. Now, if you ever you know, watch the show, you could see that he doesn't see as we do, but he still, that information comes in. So a lot of more, there's a lot more research that's out there that they're starting to do where uh, people who are blind, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, when I talked about the brain, the um, occipital lobe in the back of the brain is the place where sight actually occurs. And the eyes are just information that are, is gathering it in. But they're starting to use devices now, especially with computers being so <clears throat> so small, implanting them. So that way the uh, people who are blind are starting to see a little bit more. So you know, technology is going that direction and will be, um, you know, real interesting how what would happen. You know, if you ever had any difficulty seeing, um, you know, looking at the transducers. So as we have uh, five data reduction systems, we also have five transducers which are the devices, which is your skin, your nose, your tongue, um, you know, your eyes, your ears, and so forth. Now, the question I want, to, want you to think about, too, which of your senses would you prefer to lose? Would you prefer to lose your sight, your smell? Smell is very connected to, uh, to taste and vice versa. Um, so that's something to think about, which one that you would prefer to lose if you were to lose one. Hopefully not. So let's talk about perceptual features. These are basic elements of stimulus patterns such as lines, shapes, edges, spots, and colors. And um, when we take a look at at uh, perceptual features, the eyes and the brain they pick up on perceptual features as you know to try to understand the world around you. So they try to make sense out of it by doing that. And I'm going to tell you a little story that uh, an experience, and I want you to think about: Have you ever had this experience? But again, was I nuts? Was I not? Okay. Okay, so in terms of perceptual features, let me give you a couple of stories and tell me what you think about them. And again, as if you've had any experiences like this. A number of years ago, um, uh, my sister, who was a school nurse, uh, went to um, uh, we went to a friend's house, and the friend invited us in, and, and she was showing us some paintings that she had done of of Jesus. And I uh, said, oh, cool, I love the really big paintings and stuff. And when she lived in a mobile home in a small town, uh, Stanfield, uh, Arizona. And um, <clears throat> it was interesting when when we were done, we were, uh, we were uh, outside. And, um, uh, and basically, I was standing, my sister was standing next to me. There was a fence between us. And then right in front of us was our friend facing us. But we were facing the mobile home. Now, the door was open in the mobile home, and we had just come out, and there's a big old window with uh, a, a curtain uh, for, towards in, for the living room. And at the exact same time, my sister and I, we said, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah. So what I saw was big, fat fingers that were skin-colored opening up the uh, the curtain, and when we looked, it let it go. I said, did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. We just came out. There's nobody there. So, you know, my sister claims that she saw as, as, as claws. I just saw fat, thin, three-fingered um, fingers. So that was my perceptual feature. There was something that was familiar to me, which was the fingers. So we'd go back in to check it out. Maybe there's somebody playing a joke or or something like that. So what I do is I go, and um, there's a bedroom off to the left of the um, the living room. And I thought, oh, maybe they played a joke and I ran in there because we just went right in. And so I started going into the uh, the bedroom uh, to see if anybody is hiding in there. And then all of a sudden I hear, kill, 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 kill. No, no, just kidding. I, I didn't hear any of that. If I did, I would have run. Uh, so I went in and there's nobody in there. <clears throat> so when I came back out, right as I came out of the doorway, I hit this one spot. And I got the chill. <clears throat> and then step back, no chill. Step back to the same spot Brr, chill so what's the first thing you think about when you have a chill like that now most people will think you know ghost said so, no 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 
I'm thinking, you know, psychologically, but also um, scientifically, so there's got to be another reason for that. So air vents. Maybe there's an air vent, an air conditioning vent that's blowing air there, and that's one spot. So I looked around. There was no air vents there. There were no air vents whatsoever that could have caused that chill. So we never really found out, you know, what was going on with that. But we did find out that uh, the friend said that on that spot that her mobile home was on, used to be a bar that burned down. So who knows? Maybe there's somebody who died there. Um, you know, and their ghost was still around. But uh, again, I come from a different background to where I'm Latino. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, belief in the supernatural and experiences too. But I also come from with my PhD saying that there's something scientific that this can, you know, help explain. And so that's that's one story. Now, here's another story, too, and tell me what you think about this. Uh, you can write it down in the comments if you'd like. Uh, there, was a, there was a small town close to Cass Grand, Edel, Arizona. <clears throat> and about, phew, I'm thinking about 10 years ago, or a number of years back, there was a vision of the Virgin Mary in the bell tower. And uh, a small little town, really small, itty-bitty town, small uh, church and everything, but people were coming from all over the place. Uh, just to see, as as a pilgrimage, see this vision of the the Holy Mother, and so you know, I'm like, okay, cool. Um, you know, I was teaching at, at CAC, and my mom and my sister came uh, back from going over there, and said, oh, it's beautiful. You have to go check it out. It's really neat. My dad, on the other hand, was more of a skeptic. You know, he said, ah, look around, see, you know, what's causing it, right? So, all right, cool. So I went over. And there are a whole mess of people, again, you know, it was on the news, all this stuff here going on. People from all over other countries were coming down to uh, a small little Eloy. <clears throat> and um, what ended up happening was I was like, well, can we check it out? So I'm watching people. I'm checking it out. I'm looking up. And sure enough, in the bell tower, if you, you see the the bell tower, let's see if I can get this to where, do a little pen here. Um, you know, in the bell tower... Go. You have, you have. Okay, here's a bell tower, like this. Okay, and then yeah, it has a little top there, but it has uh, yeah, the bell right here, right. But on the inside corner, there was an image that was brighter than the bell or any of the other spots, and that was the only spot that it was at. So, you know, there was a little rectory on the side here, and there's a light that was shining up this way. So, hey, you know, okay, process of elimination. I get my hat, and then I go, and I, you know, try to, I try to put my hat over the light to see, and I, I got yelled at. So, okay, cool. I walked all the way around to check it out and to see where that image was coming from. Now, the thing that I saw, I saw this. Okay, I saw something like that, but it was all white. And on the inside of the bell tower. And um, so I, I'm, I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm observing people. <clears throat> and um, and then so I had this one older gentleman with this other, uh, his wife was there. And he goes, oh, look, 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 look. There's a bright, beautiful light that goes over her belly. And I'm looking up there. And I'm sure enough, there was a real beautiful light that went across the belly. And what ended up happening, as watching it again, that oh there it is again started coming across but there was a a um a road that came up next to the church and as the cars it was at night as the cars were moving so was the light across the belly so i'm like okay well that that's what caused that so i'm like okay i'm looking around at other people and and, and people are bringing video cameras they're being you know um binoculars to take a look and this one lady had a pair of binoculars, and she was like, oh, she's so beautiful. I can see her eyes. I can see, oh, this is so beautiful. Her face is beautiful. And so I asked her, can I borrow your binoculars so I can take a look? And so I took a look, and I didn't see anything. All I saw was this right here. Okay. From there, I'm like, okay, I'm raised Catholic. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm not the chosen one. Maybe I wasn't supposed to see it. You know, is seeing believing or is believing seeing? I don't know. I'll leave that up to you to think about and to figure out. Um, so that's that experience there. So again, this was a perceptual feature. This was something that, 
you know, that I saw. It looked like something, and and I don't know. Again, you, you decide uh, whether you saw something like that, or maybe you've had that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you see Jesus in a in a you know in a tortilla or something like that. Um, but I don't know. Seeing is believing. But let me tell you another another little story here. That um, you know, again, was it nuts? Was was I not? Was I experiencing it? Was I not? Was it a sensation? Was it a hallucination? I don't know. Well, there's a friend of mine that I used to switch off massage. Was certified as a massage therapist. You know, one of the things for massage therapy that you do is you do an energy balance. After you've done the uh, the uh, Swedish massage, you have the person and they're laying on their stomach, and I had my hands on her on her feet, and um, and I said, okay, I want you to, to picture a beautiful, bright, pure white light shining from the top of your head all the way down to my hands, and I'll do the same thing. And then that's all I said. So as I was, you know, focusing, closed my eyes, and I was looking, you know, imagining that going through her, it, it got stuck in her heart area, and I said. <clears throat> is it getting stuck in your heart area there? She goes, yeah. She says, okay, what I want you to do is shine a really, really, really bright, beautiful, um, pure light through your heart. And I'll do the same thing. Just imagine that. So and that, I didn't say anything else after that. So in my mind's eye, as I was thinking, I, I shined the light through her heart, and it hit a dark spot. And as it hit that dark spot, I saw in my mind, as, as it hit there, a dark, long arm monkey figure scurry out of the room. Okay, and I was like, our father, we're in heaven. I started praying. I felt something evil. I, I don't know what it was. I didn't say anything to her, but I was praying to myself. And so I finished it up, went out to the other room, and she came back out. And then I asked her, uh, did anything interesting happen when you shined your light? Uh, and she described to me exactly what I saw without me having to tell her. She described exactly what I saw. So, real? Not real? Uh, you know, again, is it a part of a uh, hallucination? Is it part of my perception? I don't know. That's something, again, that I'm mixed in between trying to figure out. Maybe you've had that type of experience um, than others. So I know I wrote over all the localization of function, um, <clears throat> but uh, let's talk about that really quick here. So the principle of uh, stating that sensations are determined by the area of the brain that it's activated. So you take a look at the, the occipital lobe. That's where vision actually occurs. That's the localization of that function of vision. Uh, around the temporal is uh, hearing. On the top is your, um, your parietal lobe and such. You have your motor skills uh, that uh, is that's the location. So again, sensation, immediate neural response in the brain, and it's caused by elicit elicitation of a sense.